stop sending these, you know, fight or flight signals. So we want to calm down our nervous system in general, and we want to, you know, stimulate that vagus nerve so that it's, it, you know, wakes up and it pays attention to the right signals. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show, where I explore topics intended to optimize every body 50, 60, 70, and above. Hi, everybody. Are you somebody who is struggling with gastrointestinal disruption who's over 50 and is also experiencing a block to weight loss? Then you are in the right place. You are joining me on episode number five of my six part series that I am determining or labeling your guidebook to a happy uh, gut. All right. I've covered four different subtopics on this uh, topic of a happy gut and given you information on that in my first four videos. There's one more to follow and in this one, and you want to be like really watching all six of them to get the most comprehensive approach to a happy gut. But each episode might be valuable in and of itself based, you know, depending on what you're experiencing. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about the brain gut connection. Um, the vagus nerve is attaches from your brain stem into your abdominal cavity and your um, enteric nervous system, which is the part of your nervous system that, you know, is directly um, connected to your GI tract. Um, is what I'm talking about when I talk about the brain-gut connection. And many of us, when we're having abdominal discomfort, labeled as um, idiopathic irritable bowel syndrome, you know, you perhaps you've gone to the um, gastroenterologist and you've got testing and you've gotten, you know, um, evaluated and nothing has been found to be structurally wrong, but nothing has been determined as to why you're having symptoms. And now you're left to figure out, you know, what do you, what can you do about it? Um, some medications might be a given, some of them work, some of them might not be working. Um, so what can you do from a lifestyle behavioral perspective? And that's what my video series is about. All right. So in this episode, we're talking about that great brain gut connection. So most people think if they were trying to, you know, heal their digestive system, control for the, dis the distension and the bloating and the swelling, the constipation, the diarrhea, the cramping, the pain, they need to look at the food. Um, and what they're ingesting. And that is very, very true. And I've covered that in the first four episodes, but there's a huge nerve component to this. And so if you are emotionally um, in unrest, if you're under a tremendous amount of stress, um, then your nervous system is compromised and it's not the signals back and forth and what your the messages that are getting sent to your digestive system are appropriate for somebody who's in fight or flight that might have to be running away from a wild animal or, you know, fighting, you know, just to save their life as primitive human beings. But now in 21st century America, we have no physical output. So the messages that the enteric nervous system is sending to the gut are now telling it to kind of shut down and, 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 and hold off because you know, other things are important in fight or flight if you had to physically fight or flat or run from something. So your digestive system is getting messages to shut down, slow down, hold off on digestion, and, um, and other systems are getting um, more of a priority. But, you know, in 21st century, A, it's not in like episodic stress, it's chronic stress. And so, um, and we have no physical output. Our digest digestive system doesn't need to be turned off or slowed down, but yet that's what's happening on a chronic level. Hence why you might get misdigestion. Um, food might slow down and sit in there fermenting for a longer period of time that because of the messages that the nervous system is sending to the digestive system and vice versa. All right. So this is a big piece that is being overlooked um, by our medical world, because, you know, the brain is over here in psychology and the physical body is over here in our traditional medicine. It's changing, but it's very slow to change. And so you're not getting the brain piece and this enteric nervous system, which is the brain's link, you know, to the digestive system. So that's why I'm addressing it in this series and in this episode. So what do we need to do so that we can keep that vagus nerve, you know, strong and giving the right messages, you know, uh, even though you're under stress to the digestive system um, or, you know, not getting, uh, you know, giving the wrong messages because you're under stress um, to the nerve, to the digestive system. Um, so there's two 
components to this. And the first one is, you know, you got to take on some stress management techniques because, you know, in my evaluation and my experience with working with clients and living in the world of the 21st century myself is that, you know, we're not going to get to the point where you don't have stress or that you are, you know, that you can manage all that comes in. It's, it's, it's growing, I think, you know, and being alive on the planet for 60 years myself, you know, so we have to learn how to manage it, not how to, uh, you know, eradicate it or wait for, you know, the tsunami wave to pass and then everything will calm down because that's not happening anymore. There's, there are very few, if ever, these calm down periods, right? So stress management tools so that your fight or flight response is buffered and now the vagus nerve and the connection of your enteric nervous system to your digestive system is going to operate the way it should be when you're at, when you're um, not stressed when you're calm and relaxed hi everybody i wanted to interrupt this podcast because i want to give you something your second 50 dot life is my virtual platform that is designed for both men and women over 50 and 60 70 and 80 and it includes pre-recorded video information on exercise and how to do it, whether you are fit and in good health, or if you have bad knees, bad shoulders, a bad back, whatever. It includes information on how to eat for weight management and how to eat for health management. It includes information on the psychology of the aging and what do we need to do in our heads because let's face it, this aging thing is not for the faint of heart. So your second 50 dot life is a virtual platform of resources that you can access at your own leisure, but it also includes two times a month live video coaching with me so that you can bring your own individual questions and get individual coaching as well as have access to all the information on the pre-recorded videos. So please check it out because we're all in this together and we got this if we work as a team. All right, everybody, back to the show. Thanks. All right, so we have to have stress management tools. Um, some of the basic ones that I tell clients to do that are easy to do, you just have to do them. You have to take them on and be consistent um, is gratitude journal or just reflection of what went right for you during your day and writing it in a journal at night just before you go to bed because now your nervous system, your brain is going to be dreaming on positive things as opposed to spinning on negatives and igniting that fight or flight um, you know, response in your nervous system, which then is going to make you not digest your food well overnight, which is when you're supposed to be catching up from eating and, and activity during the day. All right. So this gratitude journal about timed or a happiness journal or things that make you smile, you can label it whatever you want and writing things down so that that's what's in your mind before you go to bed is a very, very, very effective tool at helping to calm down the vagus nerve um, and send the right messages for rejuvenation, rest, and relaxation overnight when your digestive system is catching up from the day. All right, that's the whole premise of intermittent fasting. But if you're intermittent fasting, but you're in this fight or flight stress response and getting the wrong nervous system, you know, messages to the digestive system, the fasting is only going to be so helpful. You have to take on the stress management tools on with that in combination. Um, a second stress release technique that I uh, talk to very frequently with clients is extended exhales. When we are relaxed, we have a longer exhale and a shorter inhale. Well, you can do that breathing consciously by just breathing in for a count of two or three or four, holding it for four counts, and then trying to breathe out for a count of eight or even longer, but a longer exhale. The number you'll get, if you Google extended exhales or stress management breathing techniques, you're gonna get a whole mess of different techniques, but all of them involve a longer exhale because that's how we breathe when we are relaxed, when we are calm, when we are happy and content. We have a longer inhale and a shorter exhale when we're revved up and stressed because we need more oxygen theoretically because when we're stressed, we're supposed to be fighting something. All right. But again, we're not fighting anything now. It's all in our head oftentimes. So we, we don't need the bigger inhale, even when we're under stress now in 21st century America, most of the time. Um, but we can, we can toggle that system into relaxation by doing a longer exhale. All right. So stress management tools I'm talking about, the two big ones are a gratitude journal just before you go to bed and then your extended exhales. Now there's many, many others like meditation, visualization, yoga, 
um, to name a few, like managing stress, walking in nature, taking time to just relax and breathe and taking five minute breaks to just be in the middle of your day and not have your to-do list in your mind, just concentrating on the environment and the beauty of it, like taking some time out, little, little breaks are stress management tools that are very, very helpful. Um, but I want to give you one more thing before we get done with this video for that vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is closest to the surface of the outside surface of your body at your belly button. So taking two fingers and just right like on your belly button or right above it, um, tapping. So this is what I'm doing, like tapping. You can count to 30. And what you're doing now is stimulating that vagus nerve so that if it's, you know, been overly producing, you know, this stress reaction um, and sending the wrong messages to your digestive system to cause an in uh, misdigestion of food, which is then causing the bloating and the distension and the pain and the constipation and or diarrhea. So stimulating that belly button by just tapping 30 times can, you know, wake up the, the, the uh, vagus nerve and tone it. So it's now it's like attentive and it's like, okay, this is what I need. These are the messages I need to send under these circumstances. And now you're, you're um, rejoining your, your enteric nervous system and your digestive system in a way that's going to be more supportive for proper digestion and alleviating some of these digestive, you know, miss symptoms of pain and um, embarrassment, honestly. Right. So the enteric nervous system is the brain gut connection. It can be overstimulated and then get un and then like kind of get tired and not send the right signals or be sent stuck sending these, you know, fight or flight signals. So we want to calm down our nervous system in general and we want to, you know, stimulate that vagus nerve so that it's, it, you know, wakes up and it pays attention to the right signals. All right, everybody, this is episode number five in my six part series, but it's not the only thing to do for a happy gut. Like it's one of the things. So pay attention to all, like go back and watch the other five, catch the sixth one. You can go onto my platform, yoursecond50.life, where I have even more information, not just about digestion, about just things health related to over 50 men and women and uh, how to manage weight and how to manage health so that we are living our optimal lives in our second 50. Right, everybody? Be well. Enjoy the second half of your life. We got this aging thing. And I'll see you in the next video. And if you'd like to have access to some of my additional resources, I can be found at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on my website, www.judyterrell.com.